we will probably never see another NFL MVP that plays the running back position, especially after Derrick Henry failed to receive any votes in 2020. He was absolutely dominant that season, had over 2,100 all-purpose yards, had 17 total touchdowns, and led the Titans to an 11-5 record. He was the best player on the Titans, was the engine for the Titans offense, and finished the year with the fifth most rushing yards ever in a single season. He dominated the league and failed to get any MVP votes. The only rationale I can think of when I take a look back at the Titans season that year is that the Titans actually had an offensive supporting cast. You take a look at AJ Brown, he had over a thousand receiving yards, 11 total receiving touchdowns. Corey Davis had 984 receiving yards, four receiving touchdowns. Johnny Smith had over 400 receiving yards, eight total receiving touchdowns. There were pieces there alongside him that produced. Then when you take a look at their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill had the best year of his career that year, had over 3,800 passing yards, 33 passing touchdowns, seven interceptions. He was producing from the pocket. In contrast, you take a look at Adrian Peterson, who is the most recent running back to ever win the MVP award. He had little to no supporting cast. Christian Ponder was his quarterback, not a starting caliber quarterback in the NFL. Percy Harvin was the most productive receiver in that offense, only had 677 receiving yards, and no other receiver had over 500 receiving yards that year. That is really bad. He had to do everything on his own and is the reason that Vikings team made the playoffs. Adrian Peterson was the only player on that offense that struck fear into opposing defenses and was the only player defenses were worried about stopping. And Derrick Henry's case, even though you know defenses were primarily game planning around Derrick Henry, they still had to worry about A.J. Brown, they still had to worry about Corey Davis, and in the red zone, Jonu Smith was still scoring touchdowns. That brings me to why, as of right now, Saquon Barkley needs to be receiving MVP votes if the Giants continue to win football games and he continues his rate of production. He's leading the NFL in yards from scrimmage, is on pace for 2,300 scrimmage yards, and is on pace for 10 total touchdowns. Also, the Giants Giants have a 4-1 record when nobody expected them to go above 500 this season and nobody expected them to beat the Titans in week one and last week they found a way to beat Aaron Rodgers in the Packers. Saquon Barkley is the reason that all has been happening and has had little to no supporting cast. Kenny Galladay has two catches. Sterling Shepard has only played in three games and his season is done due to injury. Kadarius Toney has zero receiving yards. Their rookie Wandel Robinson only played in the first game and has one catch. Last week they their starting receivers versus the Packers were Richie James, David Sills, and Darius Slayton. Side tangent, Darius Slayton needs to receive way more playing time because he's actually a productive receiver, and in my opinion, probably better than almost every single other receiver on the Giants roster. If you project the stats for Giants receivers like I've already done with Saquon Barkley, Richie James is going to be the Giants' leading receiver this year with just 598 receiving yards and zero total touchdowns. Now, I need to address the Giants' quarterback situation, and if you you go on Giants Twitter and see what Giants fans are saying about Daniel Jones, they think he's one of the biggest reasons the Giants are winning football games right now. And in my opinion, I think that is far from the case. And you can probably tell by the Giants wide receiver production. The only thing he is doing to help the Giants win football games right now is he is not turning the ball over and making stupid decisions like he has been in the past. Other than that, he has not been electric. He has not been the engine to the Giants offense. That title belongs to Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley is the one making everything function over there. When you look at Daniel Jones's production in a vacuum, his numbers have been far from elite this season. He only has one game over 200 passing yards, only has three passing touchdowns and two interceptions, and if you project his stats over the rest of the season, like I've done twice already, he's only going to throw for 2,900 passing yards, and he's only going to throw for 10 touchdowns and seven interceptions. In my mind, as an NFL fan, that is the furthest thing from a good season when it comes to a quarterback passing the football. Now, I also will address the fact that he has been very productive on the ground because if I did not address that, Giants fans would call me disingenuous and not addressing the full case. When I look at Daniel Jones's production and compare it to that of other quarterbacks that are productive on the ground, it is not the same. Saquon Barkley is the one that teams are scheming for. He is the one that strike fear into opposing defenses. He is the one averaging five and a half yards a carry. Daniel Jones's production is built off of that. No one in the week prior to 
playing Daniel Jones is worried about stopping him on the ground. They are worried about stopping Saquon. In comparison, Lamar Jackson, he strikes fear into opposing defenses. Teams look to stop him on the ground first before they then look to stop J.K. Dommins. Teams are not nearly as scared of what Daniel Jones can do on the ground compared to guys like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and Kyler Murray. They're just not the same. Now, with all that being said, I think it is pretty clear Saquon Barkley is the reason the Giants are winning football games right now. He does not have elite weapons like Derrick Henry did in 2020 when he had his historic campaign, and his roster and supporting cast is much more like Adrian Peterson's in 2011. Although, I also will throw out there again, Daniel Jones is 10 times the quarterback of Christian Ponder because I don't want that to get thrown in my face and think I'm making that comparison there. If the Giants make the playoffs and do go above 500, I think it is ridiculous for Saquon not to receive any MVP votes. The Giants were viewed as a team that were going to be picking in the top 10. No one believed in him. Yet after five weeks, Saquon leads the league in scrimmage yards, has led the Giants to a 4-1 record, and has been dominant. At the end of the day, he may not win because Patrick Mahomes is having a great year, Lamar Jackson is having a very great year, and Josh Allen is the most important player for his team. But if the Giants do make the playoffs, I do not see how there is no one out there that thinks he doesn't deserve any MVP consideration. He is one of the most important players in the league. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe, it helps us out more than you think, and we will see you in our week six predictions.